Hey everybody, last week I did a video about a bad webcam, and I had to record the webcam on Riverside. No big deal, right? I really wasn't thinking, and just dragged the Riverside video into my timeline, like I do my regular QuickTime recordings. But when I started editing, I wondered why the audio sounded so bad when it got to the Riverside recording. I could describe it to you, but better yet, I'll just play you a sample, but stick around because I'll share a tip that will ensure you get the best audio quality when editing your videos. Here I am on the Lumina. I pulled it out for this review and updated everything just to make sure there wasn't a firmware update or something that would otherwise improve the quality of the video. As you noticed, the audio quality drops considerably when we hit the Riverside clip. It sounds like low quality, lossy compression. Riverside used to describe the audio embedded in their video files as wave quality or something along those lines. As much as I like Riverside services, I'm not a fan of their marketing. They tend to over-exaggerate things. Just look at the marketing for their recent Magic Audio. Want to hear something cool? Magic Audio uses machine learning on millions of recordings to emulate a rich and immersive studio sound experience. To put it simply, it makes everything sound like it was recorded in a million dollar studio when it wasn't. That's over the top. We'll ignore the poor job on the loudness normalization or lack thereof. I'm sure it will become an impressive tool someday, but right now, in its current state, it's just as bad as Adobe's Voice Destroyer. It certainly does not make something sound like it was recorded in a million dollar studio, but I digress. Let's get back to the audio quality on the video files. Some of you may understand why lossy compression is bad, and why we want either lossless files like FLAC or Apple lossless or uncompressed files like WAVE. But have you actually heard what is being lost when we use lossy compression? So here we are in Logic. We have the raw audio recording as provided by Riverside, and I'll play that real quick. Here I am on the Lumina. I pulled it out for this review and updated everything just to make sure there wasn't a firmware update or something that would otherwise improve the quality of the video. So that doesn't sound too bad. Now I'll duplicate that track, and what I'm going to do now is I'll... Logic has a gain plugin which allows me to invert the phase. So I'll invert the phase, and I'll play back the duplicated track. Here I am on the Lumina. I pulled it out for this. So we can tell it's the same track. There, everything's normal even though I've inverted the phase. But let's see what happens when I play both of these tracks together. So you hear nothing, and that's verified by watching the meter in the middle of the screen. That's because the two files cancel each other out because they are identical. This is why they call this a null test. Now what I'm going to do is import the audio that was embedded in Riverside's video recording from earlier. Here I am on the Lumina. I pulled it out for this review and updated everything just to make sure there wasn't a firmware update or something that would otherwise improve the quality of the video. As you can tell, that's the same lossy version we listened to earlier. So now I'll do the same thing. I'll invert the, f I'll invert the phase. And now we'll play them back together and see what happens. Okay, 
Okay, so that sounds like, I don't know, a demonic AMSR version of myself. But what we're hearing there is all of the parts of the audio that are different between the two files. In other words, this is all the audio that is being removed by the lossy compression. This isn't good sounding audio and Riverside knows it. They told me that the Riverside editor uses the raw audio, not the embedded audio. So they know the embedded audio isn't that good and the raw audio sounds much better. So the question is, how do we avoid this issue if we aren't using Riverside's editor? You'll want to do the same thing Riverside does. You'll want to sync the raw audio to your video and then mute the embedded audio. Any decent video editing program should do this for you. If yours doesn't, don't worry. It's not that difficult when using Riverside since the files should start at the same time. I've run into a few situations where they don't, and if you need to adjust them to get them synced up, here's how I do it. So we'll come back to our Riverside clip. Here, Here I, I am, am on, on the Lumina. Lumina. We can tell by playing this back that the two clips are not in sync. The first thing I'll do is look for a place where I can see a spike in the audio, and then I'll want to zoom in. So I'll probably zoom in on this space right here. Okay, so that's not as spiky as I want it to be. So here's a really good spike. I'm looking for something unique that has something I can zoom in on to really line up the audio. I'm looking to place the playhead at the top of the peak. And now I'll just slide this waveform over. <clears throat> until we're in the same spot. Now when we play it back, we should be in sync quality of the video. I'm using the Lumina in plus mode. And the thing with video is it doesn't need to be 100% in sync. Like if I nudge this over just slightly, we'll hear a little bit of phasing from them not being 100% in sync, but it will be close enough that everything's going to look like it matches up with the lips on the video. And recording in Riverside. I would typically record this. So it's really not that difficult to align things up manually. As long as you just zoom in on a peak that you can see. I mean, something like this, I probably wouldn't even need to zoom in quite as much. Because it's more of a defined peak. But Lumina Pro still doesn't. And I can tell by listening back to that, I'm still slightly off. doesn't work with quick. So if you need to, zoom all the way in. But usually you can, once you've done this for a while, you're able to do it visually without having to zoom in too tightly. So this is one easy step that will improve the audio quality of your video content. We want to use the highest quality possible because platforms like YouTube will re-encode the video, meaning we'll lose even more quality when they apply their own lossy compression. While I've got your attention, please help me grow the channel by spreading the word. You can do this by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, or sharing content that would help someone you know. Every little bit helps. So now, what do you think? Can you hear the difference? 
Is the embedded audio quality good enough for you? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.